Do you guys remember in my goals and ambitions video, I showed off some Christmas presents and one of those few Christmas presents was in this tub here, a gift from my good friend Troy. And that is the Salmopius Langenbertri, if I pronounced that correctly. Now it is fine in this tub, but we are actually going to be getting it a new home today. I was gonna do this off the camera, but I thought, you know what, you haven't really had a tarantula video for a little while, and I know some of you are here for the teas, so why not document it with you guys? So it's actually going to be going into this enclosure here. This is a Mantis Den, not for Mantis range enclosure. And uh, yeah, well, we're kind of just doing this completely off the bat. Just decided to press the record button and we're just gonna see how this video goes. So please excuse the fact that in my last few videos, I am wearing my pyjama trousers because I want to be comfy, all right? So let's get this set up first and then we'll have a look at this tarantula and get it into its new home. Okay, first things first, let's open this and add some substrate. Now, I'm actually going to be using a topsoil substrate and I'll probably be using that from now on. I do have some cocoa fiber that I need to get used up at some point. That's gonna be loud. Um, but I've stored it in my garden. Uh, this was not a good idea. We'll do it by hand. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I stored it in my garden and um, it's cold, it's clumpy. Uh, it'd just be easier to get the topsoil from my room. But the reason I'm gonna be moving from cocoa fiber to topsoil is the fact that topsoil is handy for a lot of other animals such as millipedes, isopods, so on and so forth. That I just thought I may as well from now on stop buying cocoa fiber so that the substrates I buy can be used for all of my animals. Now as this Salmopius is still a juvenile, it will still kind of make some dirt curtains perhaps. So I still want to supply the substrate right up to the line. Like so. And we're gonna add in some bits of bark. I want to kind of corner this so that it can feel safe and secure in there. And we're even going to add a little bit to the side, which actually removes a lot of our viewing capabilities. But when we were to turn this, whoa, we'll be able to see the spider crawling along in the back there. And as the, the back will be facing the darker part of the shelving unit, it might be more visible rather than completely webbing it up so that we can see that spider. So now we're going to add some moss. I always like putting moss in my enclosures. Even in arid species enclosures, I put dry moss in. In enclosures for things like this, I do put slightly dampened moss. Although this stuff is dry right now, I will be dampening it down later on. Now I always like to put my moss around the bark. I think has a nice aesthetic look. It's more for me than anything else. What do you think of that? So all we need now, well, there's a bit of leaf litter there. We'll chuck that in, why not? Is a, a water dish. And it's in like so. Okay, let's see whereabouts this spider is right now. Ah, it's just there. You see it holding on? just on the edge of the bark. And you can see how it's webbed this piece of bark and pulled some of the dirt into the web and it's staying on the darker side. Kind of what we want to imitate by having the darker side behind in here. I'm thinking actually, if we take this water dish out for a moment, we might actually have enough space. Yes, we do. To entice the spider up and out. Come on. You're gonna go back down, aren't you? <sighs> okay.
Okay, new plan. I don't want to stress this spider out more than it needs to be. So we're going to see if we can simply remove this bark and put it straight in the enclosure as it is. There. Nice and simple. So I've actually moved the bark back down here because the spider is sat on the top just here as you can see. Now they like to stay around the vicinity of their web. This one's being quite shy which means she might well just keep curving around her own web. What we want her to do is to go up. So we're going to see if that will work. If not we're simply going to leave her as she is. There's no need for me to keep pestering her when she will move eventually anyway. Oh, she's getting moody. Come on, girl. Come on. And it's just as simple as that. So let's pop this water dish back in and then we'll take a look at her, hopefully before she decides to run. So there she is. Just gonna go around the back, I think, and investigate behind there. She's getting away from the light. Although she's, <laughs> she's literally just popped her head around. Maybe her bum doesn't fit quite round that way. But she's got a really beautiful, glossy kind of brown coloration. She's got that black stripe along the abdomen. And I think she'll look really good in this home. It should do her for a couple more molts yet, and then we can move her into bigger again. So if I turn this, I'm hoping there isn't gonna to be too much glare. We can have a look at the carapace. She's pretty much a uniform color, although the carapace has a slightly more golden sheen to it. Really kind of cool. It's kind of like an incy gold, although you can't quite pick that out on the camera here. But in my sight, her carapace is very similar to that of the incy's, whereas her body is more moderate brown. But I think she's a really, really cool spider. She won't feed today because she is shy. She is in a new environment, so we're not going to get that clip for you. But I hope you enjoyed watching her rehouse all the same. Now, as that wasn't really much content for a video, I've also decided to share with you some news. Now, do you remember, I think it was probably on the old channel now, um, I purchased some mantis, some Schroeder mantis species, uh, male and female. I also had another that I gifted to my friend James on a live stream. Well, both the male and the female have now matured. The male matured a while ago. My female has now just matured. So I thought we'd have a quick look at those guys to end this video off, just so you've got something more to look at. Now, the male is incredibly pretty. I'll just get him for you now. So in here is our male. Now, hopefully he won't fly off when we try and show him off. Oh, show him off. Oh, show him off. Oh, show him off. Oh. Show him off. oh. Blimmin' hell, I forget that that door does that. How can we kind of prop this up? Will that work? Yes! Mad skills. So here he is. He's got an elegant green coloration, long wings. He's got a darker body there and those typical mantis alien heads. Now he also has some lighter tones on his arms oh as it were if you can see there almost yellowish he is really really pretty right but i think the female is actually pretty ugly i am not going to lie to you guys so i don't want him flying off, off as i said so i'm going to put him back now and then i'll show you the female but she is freshly molted as in last night so we're not going to be taking her out or handling her we're just going to be taking a look at her 
so here she is now she didn't molt fully right her wings are deformed but that's not why I think she's ugly I just think overall <laughs> she's a little bit of a mong um i don't know she's butch she's brown she's still cool i still love her don't get me wrong and she's looking at me now like what are you saying about me but we will try pairing them nonetheless and see what happens although this male is getting on a bit now he's been matured a while so hmm, fingers crossed fingers crossed now we are going to finish this video in a second but two more little updates one this is our kubara species panda king now i haven't done a full count but i had a little sift through today while i was giving them some back guano and i reckon our count now is near on if not more than the 50 mark that's a guess i think i counted at least 30 but i haven't gone through the substrate so i'm going to say we've got at least 50 kubara species panda kings which means i am doing really really well with this enclosure i want to just show you this stick here now you have to excuse the mess it's a food plant cleaning day tomorrow, although they've actually ate these a bit quickly. And there's only two in here and we have a paper towel bottom. Now I actually isolated these because the colony had some issues in their previous enclosure. So this is their temporary isolation enclosure, which is why they'll be moved back out. Now I know they're happy and healthy, but check this out. Now, this is a stick insect that I have wanted to do, to do a phasmid files on for ages. Unfortunately, we only have two females. Do you still want to see the phasmid files video on this? This species here has the most potent spray of all the stick insects I have ever owned in my entire life. Now, without having over to look at or a male, would you still like to see the phasmid files video if you do please comment below and i'll show you the scariest stick insect i own so this video didn't quite turn out the way that i planned it i thought that that reed house might be a little bit more entertaining for you take a bit longer but that's what happens when you do a spare of the moment video kind of one of those filler videos and the reason being i needed to add another video in because there are some things going on behind the scenes that I need to be putting all of my focus on so I had to add an extra video on my filming day and this is what you got I'm sorry if it wasn't the type of video you liked but if you do like random updates chucked in videos let me know that in the comments below too and I promise you we'll be back to normal shortly and soon I will reveal some of the awesome things I am doing behind the scenes. Oh, and I'll also be revealing what we were doing with those worms that I promised to show you ages ago. Sorry, it will come up. But thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.